and I'm glad to be with you here this morning to talk a little bit about the acute care content that we have and some of the acute care content that's coming. Um, this is a small group, so it's always nice to be able to just connect, to get your feedback, to get your thoughts, um, uh, to find out what are some of your needs. We are uh, very busy filming, uh, filming lots of good content, um, as well as continuing to build new things that I will give you glimpses of that I think will help to make our classroom that much more engaging. Um, just to, briefly about myself, um, uh, I've been teaching for 17 years at Azusa Pacific University. My content area of expertise is orthopedics, so you can see I've done my residency and fellowship through Kaiser. Um, I still teach for them. Uh, I teach for the USC Spine Fellowship using our apps as well. Um, all of these, we use content from our apps. Um, and I've spent a lot of time wondering, why is it so hard to turn these eager, young, bright students into clinicians? So it's become very clear to me. I mean, my, my focus area is orthopedic rehabilitation. Um, it's become very clear to me that uh, it's not as simple as just delivering the material. Um, and that's why some of the things I hope to show you will give you a glimpse of where PhysioU is going in this next generation, next iteration of, of learning resources, where I really believe interactive uh, e-modules, interactive evaluations and treatments are very powerful ways for students to begin to see the big picture, to see who are they supposed to become. Um, so I'll share little bits of that with you. Um, I chair the IRB at our university and um, have spent the last seven to eight years dreaming up cool things that I think really have helped my students and helped our program and a number of different programs in the country this year in particular. Uh, but just know that we've been building these apps since well before the pandemic. Um, the pandemic just really made it clear that um, we really should explore lots of new resources that can help students learn better. Um, so I'm going to actually, just for a second, I'm going to mute everybody. Now, feel free at any point to unmute yourself and jump in with questions, or James is keeping track of the chat. Feel free to throw questions into the chat, and I'll stop periodically to, to get your feedback and to get your thoughts. All right, so moving on here, I just want to mention that uh, we have a new partnership with JOSPT. We envision the future of research and research dissemination to be heavily video-based. We hope that students and clinicians will not need to imagine what are the tests and interventions that people did in their research, that we can actually take that one step further where PhysioU can actually supply videos. We've supplied videos for all of the clinical practice guidelines. We are going to be doing that for a number of select articles per, per uh, per monthly journal. And um, it's, this is exciting for us. It's something we've always believed, believed was important for professions that are heavily motor skill based. We also have a strategic partnership with Dr. Hel Ellen Hillegas. Uh, many of you who use her textbook. Um, this year, she mentioned that uh, we're, we're working together to make sure that the content is uniform that the content can be taught in multiple places. Uh, she wrote here, just as the president and CEO of PT Cardiopulmonary Educators, I'm thrilled to be partnering with PhysioU and Dr. Michael Wong to provide the best resources for teaching cardiopulmonary education, including labs and case studies virtually. So we've, been, we've met several times, we've talked a lot about teaching and learning. And this year she said, hey, when the institution where I'm at, so she's at Mercer, went virtually for education, we turned for we uh, to COVID uh, went virtually for education due to COVID. We turned to PhysioU for labs and case studies to help our students who could not have hands-on lab. So I know most of us are back to hands-on lab uh, face to face, but I think uh, from the stuff that I'll show you and how we've been using it in our, in our program, um, there is a better way I think of how we teach students motor skills. Um, so this content is also great for new instructors who are not familiar with providing lab opportunities in an academic institution. So we think of ourselves as a support, a support of faculty and students, uh, so that not everybody has to reinvent the wheel. We can film a lot of the techniques. We can organize it for you. 
Um, and then you can leverage it in your classroom so you can focus on the pedagogy of teaching. So I want to share first, actually, this is my chair. And I think about five years ago, almost three, maybe four years ago, we sat down together and said, how can we turn our cardiopulmonary class into something that is more interactive and create a resource that will make teaching and learning in the cardiopulmonary classroom easier? So I'm going to let her share a little bit about what we've done and how she, how she envis envisions the app being used. I've taught cardiopulmonary content for almost 20 years. Challenges teaching about cardiopulmonary patients tend to be you don't have those patients with you as you teach. These are patients that are fragile, um, that um, go off quickly. You don't have examples of the person in front of you many times, particularly the acute patients. So the idea with the app was to create uh, examples of patients that you could see and watch the performance of techniques as well as integrate with an understanding of diagnoses, how patients present, how to examine them, and how then to treat them. I think uh, this will make things very clear and cohesive in students' minds. A particular category of patients, how they present um, examples of the findings for each of those. I think it will make it much clearer uh, for students to learn the material. Instructors will find this a useful tool, I believe. In the classroom, you can teach pathology, pathophysiology of disease, but to explain what a patient looks like, it makes it much clearer to be able to show a video saying, here's a patient and here's how they will present. Based on that presentation, here is what you as a physical therapist will find upon your examination. Based on your examination findings, this is how you would proceed with your intervention. It makes it much clearer to students to understand the application of the pathophysiology that you just discussed. I believe students will use this on their own to continue their learning. We can discuss things in class, but they will have at their disposal any time of the day or night a recording where they can look and see how the patient presented with findings and what we did about that. It's available to them at the touch of a finger. So I remember talking with Susan about this. Um, and I'm going to walk you through the app just briefly here. And she said, Mike, unlike ortho, where a lot of the students have been exposed in the clinic during their volunteer hours, very few of our students have ever experienced acute care physical therapy or in particular cardiopulmonary physical therapy. So if we can help them see a big picture of the common practice patterns, the common clinical patterns, then they will have a better chance at seeing how all these little pieces of examination and treatment, uh, how all these pieces come together. So I said, Susan, let's, let's give it a shot. Let's see if we can help create scaffolds in their mind to allow for a deeper understanding and deeper learning when it comes to all the little techniques and tests and, and, and interventions that we're gonna teach them. So let me show you first, if I take you into the app, now, all of you should have full access. We give free access to all faculty to use it, whether they're students subscribe or not. And if you go to acute care, so we've just resorted the apps. Here's the acute care apps. There is a new acute care app that we are, we're halfway done with and we are filming in Las Vegas or in Nevada in August. So I'm gonna take you to the cardiopulmonary app. And what I want you to see is one, that we have sorted the most common conditions as patient patterns. Now, before students even come to class, they have watched their asynchronous pathophysiology lecture. So that's how we run it at our program. And then when they get to class, then they talk a little bit more about how the pathophysiology that they watched online 
connects with this patient video? Well, I have been fairly active all my life, but lately I have been so tired and so weak. And what frightens me most is my legs and my feet have been swelling. And I'm having a little trouble breathing too. It takes, I need three pillows to sleep at night. I have had um, high blood pressure for a long time. And my doctor has given me medication for that but sometimes I forget to take it and backed often. So typically Susan or the instructor will spend a little bit of time talking with the students, discussing whether it's face-to-face -face or on, or, or on a, uh, synchronous sessions online about what is it about the pathophysiology that they just watched videos of? Why is this patient complaining of swelling? Why is this patient complaining of shortness of breath and fatigue? So here are some associate diagnoses, some common risk factors. I can make that a little bit bigger. Some common reported findings and the clinical practice pattern here. Then as Susan walks through the pattern, she'll say, let's take a look at the common outcome measures. So here are the common outcome measures that the students should be aware of. Okay, so wherever it's available online, we have linked to it online. From there, if I go back, sorry, let me go back here. I think I'm here, yes. Here are some functional performance measures. And here are some geriatric considerations because many of our patients are in this geriatric age group, okay? Or fit this classification. From there, she can, talk the students through a generic subjective interview. So our students all watch this. This is a generic one. So they begin to learn the flow of questioning. So the flow of questioning is here. So they can watch this cardiopulmonary specialist asking this patient, or they can look at the components of the subjective exam and they can use this as a trigger. So when we were doing our comps, the students were allowed to reference the app as needed to trigger some of the questions that they felt like they needed to ask. So this is essentially the big video broken up into small pieces. Okay, so there's the subjective exam. Now what's unique about the app is that when you move into the physical exam, what you'll see is a clinical findings, key findings video. It's like a clinical reasoning video. So the students watch this on their own time. Cardiac muscle dysfunction associated with congestive heart failure and cardiomyopathy. On exam, you will find peripheral edema of the lower extremities. On lung auscultation, you will hear normal breath sounds with fine or coarse crackles in the lungs. Listening to the heart, you may hear an S3 or an S4 sound. There will be decreased aerobic capacity and decreased functional strength. So in a very quick picture, we are trying to create a scaffold of the common different types of patients and how they present and what are some of the impairments that they're going to have. So here's some of that information here. And then when you go in, we have a generic chart review so we teach the students how to go into an EMR and kind of the different types of information that they're going to look through in preparation for evaluation and treatment. And then we go into the objective test. Now, many of these objective tests are gonna be consistent across the different patterns, but some of the objective tests like peripheral edema assessment is specific to this particular practice pattern or clinical pattern. So, the reason why this becomes powerful is because if you can imagine your typical lab is a showing of multiple techniques, sometimes with context and often without. The context for the student is built in the app when the faculty member takes them through the pattern and talks about the common path of phys, how it affects the heart, the lungs, the swelling, and demonstrates how in certain conditions, there are certain types of impairments or um, findings that are specific to the condition. So the student is now be beginning to tease out the differences between the common patterns. 
So here is aerobic capacity assessment, signs and symptoms for stopping exercise. So these are all the videos that the students will learn to go through or watch as part of their course. And then linking the interventions to the objective testing. So here's the physical exam side. And I'm going to go beyond the physical exam. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to the interventions. And now you can see transfers with sternal precautions, acute progressive therapeutic exercise from supine to seated to standing, a walking program. You can see inspiratory muscle trainer, incentive spirometer. So you begin to help the students sort out in this massive list of test techniques and treatments I'm going to teach them in lab that certain ones are specific to certain practice patterns, certain conditions. So we've done that, if you look back to here, for all the common conditions. The same content, but organized specific to that particular condition is available for you to walk through with the students. Now, in our program, we do it a little bit beyond just the walkthrough. If you go to our website, physiou.health, and you go to educator, faculty resources, you will see that there is a button called teaching content. Here are some cardiopulmonary pattern recognition worksheets, meaning these are the main clinical patterns. These are the main clinical patterns, restrictive lung disease, obstructive lung disease. Our students will go in and play this before class on their own. This is their homework. This is what they fill in on their own. The reason is we are inviting the students through a walking tour of the app and they are answering little questions and watching videos that are all hyperlinked here. So you can see all those clinical findings videos are all hyperlinked. So we'll ask the, 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 patient, the student, what kind of outcome measures are relevant for this patient? They'll click on the outcome measures tab and boom, they'll go to the outcome measures. We can ask them in the physical exam, please watch the key findings video. What are some of the key tests and impairments? They click on the link. They do the clinical reasoning for obstructive lung disease. And then they keep going through the objective tests, the interventions. We can click on the interventions. So this is obstructive lung disease, improving chest wall mobility, secretion clearance. Which means that by the time the student comes to lab, or even meets the faculty face-to-face -to, -face to talk about a particular, let's say, obstructive lung disease, they have already walked their way through a self-guided tour of the pattern. The other thing that we do for lab, and I think this will tie in nicely here. So if I go back to the beginning of the app, you'll see that interventions and physical exam are actually part of the lab handout. So our faculty use this as part of the lab handout. You can also add URLs. So you can take accessory muscle breathing, grab this URL and copy and paste it into your lab handout. So let me show you what I mean by that here. Oops, let me go back to the PowerPoint. So one of the things we learned was really valuable during COVID this year. And I've been thinking about this a lot over the last seven years since we've been building these apps, is the best way to teach motor skills to show it once in lab and hope that they got it? Or should we apply the concept of graded exposure to help students pre-learn, preview a lot of the techniques, try some of the techniques, and then come learn it in class? So that's what we did in pretty much all of our clinical classes this year because we had all of these videos for ortho, for neuro, for cardiopalm. So the students were given their lab handout and they were asked to preview all the techniques that are on the lab handout. There are links. So watch all the techniques. If you don't have someone to try it on, then imagine them. Imagine yourself doing them. So use mental imagery. 
if you have someone to try it on, don't be afraid. Okay. You, you're not going to, you're not going to really hurt anybody. And then the ones you don't feel comfortable, that's okay. At least expose yourself to that, to the techniques. Then when we got to synchronous lab, which for us was face to face, they have already been pre-exposed twice. Once using the cardiopulmonary clinical pattern recognition worksheets, twice using the lab handout to preview the techniques. The third time they see the technique is now when they are meeting with me in class. And I'll tell you that in class, half the time I would demonstrate techniques and the other half I would just pull up something on PhysioU. It gave me a little bit of a break. Sometimes the video was better than the angle that we could film from. It was so nice to have on my laptop. I could just pull up any technique I wanted. And then the th uh, I guess the fourth thing that we did was we gave the students a place to show us that they knew how to perform the technique. We used to do this face-to-face. -face. I don't even think this year, the way things are going, that we'll be able to do it face-to-face. -face. So we did it virtually. The students had a checkoff list. They performed the checkoff techniques to our TAs online, and we gave them instant feedback. So I think one thing that I've been thinking about that we tried this year to great success was ensuring that the students had videos linked to their lab handouts and that there was a call to action. The students need to know, and you can see here, what we did was we took a, a snapshot, we did a screen capture of the technique, and then we put the link of the technique so that the students were, would be able to then click on all the techniques that they needed to learn. We did this for ortho, we did, it, did this for neuro, we do this for cardiopalm. The best way to do this, if you take a look at this lab handout, which could look like this, is to go to the PhysioU faculty resources. And here you see this master video cheat sheet. The master video cheat sheet is essentially all the videos in all of our apps organized in one place. So if you note at the bottom of this list, you see all these different apps. So I can go to CardioPalm and then I can look up Whisper, Whisper Pectoriloquy. Okay, so here I can just click on the link, copy it, and then link it directly into my lab handout. You can do this, or you can go directly into the app, find any of the techniques that you need. So actually I'll go back right here under interventions. Here is my chest wall expansion. Here are a number of different things I can do, incentive spirometer. And I will just take this URL, copy it, and then paste it into my lab handout. So think about what that means for you as a faculty member. Your lab handout just became an interactive video for the students to preview techniques before they came to lab. And you have invited them into the resource so they know how to access the videos and will be able to access it when they're off in the clinic, right? So think of this resource as something that you can re-access at any point in time throughout the curriculum. We regularly reference back to some physical agent. We go to the physical agents app. We reference back to range of motion MMT app. We're constantly moving back and forth in the resource because I think that is how students learn the best is that you can keep touching base with content that they've learned in the past, but also be able to push them forward to content that they will be learning shortly in the future. Turning your cardio, so turning your that's, cardiopulmonary. That's basically um, the two main things related to lab, augmenting your lab handout. And two, I mentioned earlier how we use these clinical pattern recognition worksheets. Our students know to do it every week. I have like four or five of them per body region for orthopedics. So before they come to class for shoulder week, they will do a worksheet about frozen shoulder. They will do a worksheet about unstable shoulder. And then they'll do a worksheet about shoulder impingement or rotator cuff tendinopathy. They will play through the app on their own because I believe that when you scaffold in the student's mind well, they can receive 
they can store and they can recall information better. And those cheat sheets are in the uh, teacher resource. That's right. The cheat sheets. Same uh, where they're found. Yeah, these clinical pattern recognition worksheets are found under faculty resources here. In um, let me go here. If you go back to the website, the main website, physiou.health, under educator, under faculty resources, there is this thing called teaching content. And in teaching content, you will see here's the orthopedic worksheets, here's the cardiopulmonary worksheets, here's um, range of motion MMT worksheets, fundamental skills, or actually here, here's the lab handouts for the different classes. Yeah, I, I forgot to mention, we created lab handouts for you if you need it. So here are all the physical exam techniques. As a PDF or a Word document, you can just take it and modify it. They have basically all of the techniques and all the pictures are hyperlinked to the video within the app. So you can just take the Word document, relabel it, and use it to your own purpose. So not only are there these worksheets, right? So these are the cardiopulmonary clinical pattern recognition worksheets here. And what I would do for your students is I would probably just download this, modify it to suit your need, and then just store it inside your LMS so the students can access it. Because in the end, all you have to do is make sure that the hyperlinks work. Once the hyperlinks work, the students can go through this on, on their own and start exploring what is this pattern like? What is peripheral arterial disease like? What's the exam? What do the patients say? All of that is self-guided. Okay, so I hope that helps for that. So maybe um, I wonder if this is a good moment for me to just stop for a second and take any, any questions about that. Any comments or questions? Let me just pause for a second. Did I see there were case studies somewhere when you were scrolling through? Yep, absolutely. So I'm going to show you that right now. One other thing that I would say is that there's a call to action. The students don't know what to do with these resources until you tell them how to learn with it. Um, you know, it's funny, as, as brilliant, brilliant and smart as these young students are, they are waiting for your direction. They're waiting for your vision on how they should learn. So for, from cardiopalm and ortho's perspective, we say, guys, if you look in your LMS, you have a clinical pattern recognition worksheet. Every week, you're going to learn about a new pattern. Your homework is to fill in this form, explore through the app, because it will help prepare you for class. So they know that every week, I have an expectation that they've gone through these worksheets and they turn them in. The second thing that I do is I always, every week, especially in ortho, I open up two or three of these clinical patterns and I talk them through it. I give them a guided tour, but then I add all of my little clinical vignettes and my clinical stories to make it all come to life. That's very useful because a resource that a faculty member uses to help them learn is a resource that the students will use on their own. It's just like a textbook that a faculty member never opens the students generally don't open it either. So the second part is, so use the clinical pattern recognition worksheet. And two, guys, you know that all the videos are linked in your lab handout. Your job, because it will make it so much easier for you to learn when you come to lab, your job is to go through your lab handout and look through the techniques, watch them once, try it out on somebody, or at least think through the process. Because when I come to show you in class this week, you'll be so much more prepared to see the nuances of the technique, to understand the pattern that I, right? The whole point of developing these clinical patterns is so that I can associate techniques to the patterns that have already been developed in their mind, right? Otherwise, it's just a pile of things that you hope that they will associate appropriately later. So that's another key part. And here's the interactive case studies. So in the interactive case studies, here you're in the app. You see that there are a number of different cases. I'll take you there right now. 
So they've watched this video before. This is the, the 80, 68 year old female with fatigue and swelling in the legs. But now you can ask the students, guys, go into your Zoom breakout rooms, your group of four, and I'm gonna have you go through the case, read through the history, look at the chief complaint, go through the medical history, past medical history, some AGs and eases if, if, if appropriate. Here's your basic chart review. Here's a basic physical exam. And then here are some discussion questions I want you to go through in your group. So that's what we've done. The students know that the answers are here, but we tell them not to look. Technically, this is for the faculty to be able to access in preparation for the discussion. So the students are going through and interacting about this patient. What findings would you expect from the physical exam, right? Because they've learned this in the clinical pattern recognition worksheets. How would you proceed with the assessment? What would you examine and how? What are some of the things you would do? Of course, all of these are hyperlinked back to within the app. So if they want to, if you don't want to just read words, you can actually go to the techniques. Okay. And then if you go further down, we have little clinical reasoning components. So you decide to auscultate the lungs and you hear the following sound. Right, so what you hear then becomes, set off. so we ask them the question, please interpret that. What is your interpretation? Should you proceed with exercise? Or actually, why might it be given, what is this sound and why might it be present? Here's your answers. Now you're preparing to exercise with a patient and you note the patient's ECG. So then the question is, are they appropriate for exercise? Or during your exercise, the rhythm has changed. Now interpret what you find and determine whether it is appropriate for you to continue exercise. So, you can see that with these interactive case studies, it allows a moment for you as an instructor and the student to begin to make some clinical decisions that are that will help make the patient come to life. Okay. So here we move back into. So um, I don't know. Do, does that answer your question? Um, I think it was Michelle. That was uh, the case studies that are available inside the cardiopulmonary, the cardiopulmonary app. Yes, that does answer it. Thank you. Great. So yeah, so there's a number of different cases. Hang on one second. Sammy, quiet, please. All right. And then let me move on to this next section. We also created a Lines and Tubes app. So the Lines and Tubes app, again, many of our students are not familiar with the Lines and Tubes. Let me take you into the Lines and Tubes app real quick. You can see what we've created here. So here is all of our apps. I'm going to go to Acute Care. Here's Lines and Tubes. Here are all the common Lines and Tubes and drainage that they're going to see. So NG tube, what's the purpose? Where's the placement? Why is it there? And what are some clinical implications from the therapist? Things that we need to avoid, what to do if it gets disconnected or check orders to see if it can be disconnected. So all of the common lines and tubes are all here organized for you. We also went and created case studies. So simple case studies that again can be used to have the students 
facil to facilitate discussion. Here's the basic patient case. What are the lines and tubes that this patient has? What are the indications? And what are some contra what is contraindicated regarding the line in the arm? So there's a lot of these little interactive cases that you can use. It just makes it easy for you in the classroom to break students up, go practice, the, talk about this case. When we come back, we'll discuss it together. Many of our apps will have these kind of case study, case study mechanisms. Okay. Now back to assisted devices. So this is also a, a, an important part of our app um, the app suite. We are teaching this actually the summer uh, of our first year of PT school. And so the faculty came to, my, came to me and said, hey, Mike, it would be a lot easier to teach about transfers, about gait training, about bed mobility if we had a good set of videos. And it's really hard to read about a modified three-point gate, much easier for students to watch it and they'll get it. So you can see here, we filmed this not only for student learning, but also for clinical use when they're in the hospitals. Here is preparation for fitment of assisted devices. Let's talk about a walker here. Here are the different walkers. And here's a video of, with instructions on how to set this walker up. In order to fit your patient for a walker with a forearm trough, you will first need to adjust the walker to the patient's height. Then you will attach the forearm trough. So Michelle, these are the two that are now back in Alaska, two residency trained clinicians, very, very smart, very bright, um, excellent people. So this is um, Jeff and Ali Karlik. They, um, the okay, and then you can move into gate patterns. So here are all the common gate patterns. Here's preparation for gate training, gate belt, therapist position. The students can pre-watch this. It's just linked into your syllabus. And then we ask the students to watch these videos before they come to lab to practice. Think about how efficient lab can be because they have prepared before they come to class. Now we made sure that we filmed both right and left lower extremity. So you can see right red stocking, left red stocking. So not only do students learn by watching these videos, but eventually they use these videos to train their patients. These videos can be sent home, share this page. You just email this page to a patient. You can share with them bed mobility, going up and down stairs with their right leg affected or non-weight bearing with crutches. All of that can be shared to the patient. They don't need to buy anything. This is just part of, part of the utility of the tool. And then you can go all the way from stairs, axillary crutches, right extremity, non-weight bearing. Here is going up. Here is going down. All the videos are here for your reference. So what a lot of different programs will do is they will show the video, and then the instructor will talk. Along with the video, he'll silence the video here and there and say, this is what in particular that I want you to do. So you can layer on a lot of your knowledge and your expertise. You just have this, you have this stable structure of content that you can build off of. So this goes all the way through bed mobility. It goes all the way into transfers. It goes all the way into wheelchair, purpose, factors to consider, patient education, how to fit a patient, what are the components, how to do propulsion, how to do mobility, right? These are all videos that you can share with the patient and then how to do pressure relief. So that's the assisted device app. Again, if you look back into our lab handouts, so if I go back here, let me see. If I go 
let me go to teaching content here under lab handouts. So this is under faculty resources again, teaching content. In the lab handouts, we've created it for you. Here's assisted devices. Here is lab handouts for all the assistive devices. Um, let's see, gate patterns, assisted devices, gate patterns, gate belt fitting, the instructions, the video is hyperlinked. All of this you can just download and use. I mean, we built it for ourselves and then we just thought faculty members could use it to reduce their load. Okay, and you can just download it and then cut and paste, get rid of stuff, whatever, however you want to use it. So this is a big document because it covers all the assistive device gate patterns. So it's something for you to explore, I think, is that there's a number of different worksheets as well. They've created some different worksheets for students to actually do. Please fill in the blank with the corresponding information. What's the proper measurement angles for parallel bars? The affected lower extremity for appropriate assisted device placement. What is the weight bearing status? Like all of this stuff we use as a worksheet in our classroom. So it's something for you guys to explore. All right. And then recently we worked with a pharmacist and a number of rehab professionals to create the pharmacology app. So um, all I will say is this. When you go in and explore the pharmacology app, so I'm gonna go there now, let's see, here. I can go to pharmacology, let's see. There it is. You can sort through drugs from A to Z, drug categories. So here are all your common drug categories. You can look up, you can look up medications, different medications, let's see, aceta or ibuprofen. And you'll be able to find the different medications. Common brand name, pharmacologic category, common adverse reactions, serious adverse reactions, and then implications for rehab. So we've created implications for rehab for the most common medications that our students will see. So the pharmacology app also has some basic case studies. 45 year old male with wrist pain. These, this is the medication that they're on. What is the most likely reason for this persistent wrist pain? and what would be the best solution for this problem. So there's short little cases here that help the student to kind of tease through the effect of different medications on patients that they might meet in the rehab setting. So this patient has dizziness and nausea, right? She's currently on insulin. What is the likely cause of her symptoms? So there's all these short cases, okay? Um, all right, we're coming in towards the finish line here. I just want to mention, so maybe what I'll do is let me summarize my thought on how to use the apps in your classroom. One, students can discover on their own. That means the clinical pattern recognition worksheets, that's for CardioPalm. Two, the students can preview techniques on their own. Three, the faculty member, it's valuable for you to play through the app, to use the app so that they can see how you get to different places within the app. Okay, so that's a very, a very useful component, knowing full well that they're already playing a little with it on their own. Then they practice, and then simulations to help develop their clinical reasoning. So I'm going to give you a little glimpse of that as we move towards the end of this presentation. So Dr. Jennifer Nash, myself, James, we're all meeting uh, out at UNLV, and we have a number of things we're going to be filming. Um, helping a student get comfortable in an ICU, in a room. What are the different pieces of equipment? So we're thinking of different ways to help students explore equipment on the wall, right? It's almost a little virtual reality. We have designed an inpatient rehab 
app, which loosely will cover these main topic areas. How to, uh, how to do vitals, what different types of isolation, what are the common patient populations that they will see and the protocols that they are on for total hip, for spinal surgery. So all these protocols we've already, already generated actually. Functional training, application of braces, some interactive learning that I'll show you in a second, and then common errors, things that people tend to make mistakes on. So here's bracing. We have filmed videos of donning, doffing, and explaining all the common braces that our students are gonna see. All right, so this is our Jewett hyperextension brace. Just to reorient you, the front is the part with the sternal or chest pad and pubic or pelvic pad. The back here has the thoracolumbar pad. On the sides, you're gonna see two different enclosures. This strap is meant to take the whole strap off. You just pull it to release. And on this side, you have a box that you wanna pull that'll give it a little bit of leeway to make it easier to put on. And then you wanna tighten again to add that extra support once it is on. So there will be an instructor sharing about the brace and then a separate video that you can show in class, the donning and a separate video that's the doffing. So every bracing video has three videos. All right. We also went into our sim lab with some patients um, and filmed some common, some common treatment sessions. So these are the ones that we filmed, CVA, COPD, TBI, trauma, spinal surgery, and total hip replacement. So what you'll get to watch, we're breaking these up into, into simulated e-modules. So there'll be decision-making and multiple choice questions interspersed through the entire treatment session. So just to give you a, a, a sense of what this is like. Afternoon, sir. How are you feeling? I'm okay. Yeah. yeah I'm tired. Tired. Yeah. That's okay. I saw we got you out of bed yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. It was okay. Well, my name's Jackie. I'm gonna do your physical therapist for today. Okay. The doctor wants to see if we can get you out of bed. Okay. Up at the edge of the bed. I'm gonna help you with this. I do have a walker here. If you can hang on to it to get to the chair. Okay. Now, as you can tell, I mean, this is a five, this is a 10 minute long video, but it covers a lot of the different components of a of an intervention intervention session. What we've done is actually broke. This, we've broken this video up into its components like uh, introduction to the patient, uh, to the side of bed, transfer, walking. And so eventually when a student plays through this experience, they are going to see the different components of the treatment session. There will be interactive questions for them to answer. And a lot of this, you don't even have to direct as a faculty. They will be doing this asynchronously. We're building them into asynchronous e-modules. Um, now, you, you could, we'll also make these videos available to you as faculty so that you can run your own discussion if you want. But for now, we are building them into e-modules that you can just plug a URL into your LMS or into your syllabus. The students will play through each of these and learn what was going on in the mind of the clinician as they go through this formative experience. Again, I really believe that in order to help our students become clinicians, we need to immerse them and help them experience the, the process. And we need to do that more often in relatively low stakes, low stakes, low risk ways. They should just explore, play through, interact with, I think a lot of learning will get done that way. So um, that's a glimpse of what's coming. Uh, we've also, we're also building a bunch of little micro learning experiences. So Mike, can I interrupt just for a second? Yeah, I'm sorry. Please. One, uh, your, am I in, your volume's a little harder to hear. I don't know if that's everyone else's. The other thing okay. is um, there are two questions on the chat. Uh, sure. The location of those videos and are they available now? And I'm assuming they're not available yet. They are sitting on my hard drive because we have to edit and process them. They are largely so 
eventually when you go to the inpatient rehab app, which I hope will be out by, man, it might, it might take us past fall. It, this is, this is kind of a big app. Um, maybe parts of this app will be available. You will see that there is going to be interactive learning and interactive learning will have these different cases. Let me just show you here. And your volume is a lot better now, Mike, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You can see here in the case studies, we have all of these case studies that have been filmed. And so each that 10 or 15 minute case has been broken up into short videos, right? Edge of bed, exiting the room, mobilizing the patient, finish, uh, finishing up with the patient. So these video segments will be built into the app here so that faculty can use those videos. And we will also have e-modules that if your faculty, if the faculty do not want to use these videos in that way, they can actually just deploy the e-module and the student will be able to automatically walk themselves through the, the treatment session with these interactive questions built in. So I hope you will not find this app in the app suite yet. It is, um, this is very challenging to film during COVID. So um, a lot of this stuff we've had to do very carefully. Um, and it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money actually to rent the spaces and use this. And so that's, it's coming. Just know that it's coming. I'm hoping that it will be ready by, man, probably mid-fall. Mid-fall and to be safe, actually, uh, it might not make it till fall after fall semester. I mean, of course, we'd love to build as many things as we can as quickly as we can, but um, it, it's exceptionally hard to get into the acute care setting, as you can imagine. What's next, Jimmy? Is there another thing? Uh, no, just the um, um, where are they and are they available? And I think you're saying that they're not yeah, available not right now. Yet. Obviously, they're not there. So not yet. that's it. And if you think about all of these interactive micro learning experiences we're making for the students, Think of them as like knowledge checks. So we have four that are built. We're building the other four. So I'm going to take you to go and look at a few of them. So if you look at, let's say, lines and twos, the students can use this as a review in preparation for exams, in preparation for clinicals, in preparation for comps. So this is some graded multiple choice questions, some matching, some fill in the blank questions. So there's little things like this, images taken from the app that ask the patient, the student to submit, right? What's the right answer? Okay, so there's a bunch of questions related to lines and tubes. There's a bunch of questions related to common braces. Which orthoses would be most appropriate for a patient admitted to the emergency room for acute trauma to the cervical spine? So one thing I want to share is I've told the entire team that these questions here do not have to be super, super hard. These are experiences that I want to create that have a very nice balance between challenge and victory so that students will engage in this content as a mechanism of learning without feeling that it's so difficult and so laborious that they don't want to they don't want to spend time on these interact on these interactive tools hey josh how you doing hey uh i'm doing okay a little uncomfortable okay yeah. well, what, what seems to be the issue it's like just the collar is just a little uncomfortable, but yeah. Okay. Well, the collar is supposed to be nice and tight so that it prevents you from moving because we had some surgery done and we don't want any extra damage in that area. So just bear with it for as much as you can. And then if you have any issues, you can call the nurse later. Okay. So this is the wrong video. We are now asking, did the patient respond to the patient's complaint in the right way? No. How should the therapist have responded to the patient? So all I guess is what I'm trying to show you is that there is going to be videos, there's little games, there's identification of things done wrong. These are the types of mini interactions that we're building because I think students want to interact with the knowledge that they're, they're receiving. So 
if you look back on our list, we have a medical terminology game, common medical abbreviations. We have, um, let's see, where's my other one? contraindications and precautions, post-surgical contraindications and precautions. So they'll say, hey, this patient has total hip arthroplasty, posterior approach. What are some motions that you should typically avoid, right? So all of these are not meant to be super hard, right? They're meant to be really just allow the students to pull the knowledge out of their brain and get a little bit of an endorphin rush, a little dopamine hit because they can say, yes, I knew that. Things that we're building, you can deploy them because they are graded. The students will be able to send you their grade, send you their score. So the students will be able to send you the score. These will all be available to you as faculty and for the students to play through. Um, we're still trying. We're still trying to figure out what's the best way to deploy it. I, I'd be curious from you as a faculty. These could be available to students to play through on their own, but it could also be hidden from the students, and only this faculty can put the URL in their LMS or in their syllabus, and they can make that a quiz that students need to take. So I'm curious about whether you think this should be available to all students so they can just use this as a learning tool, or this should be only hidden for faculty to, to deploy or assign. Any thoughts about that? Any thoughts about that? I think it looks great. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. But do you think, do you think it would be useful? Do you, do you think it's okay that I leave all these mini games there? Faculty can say, guys, I want you to do this and this for this week and this and this for that week and just leave it available for the students? Or do you feel like it should not be available to the students until faculty deploy it? Hi, this is Kristen. Okay. I like the idea of having flexibility because you might have a new educator who has to write test questions and that's really hard to do. So they might want to use some of the standard questions in a quiz or a test or deploy it in a class and have, you know, do a Kahoot type quiz interactive with the students. So I think depends who you ask, you'll get both answers. Yeah, I agree. Like the idea of allowing the teacher to deploy it to the students. So the teacher can decide if they want to do that or or steal it from you and use it because that's right. what we need more of, to be honest. Right. I mean, it's so hard to reinvent the wheel, right? Everybody's rewriting their exam. Um, and of course, the tricky part is everybody teaches everything a little bit different. So it is going out on a limb trying to create these interactive micro learning that everybody can agree is right. Um, so we've tried to stay relatively centrist, meaning things that are relatively indisputable we've built into these mini games. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure quite yet exactly the best way to deploy it. I, I like the idea that it is available on, on the app right through here, right? Interactive learning. Students usually don't play through stuff if they're not told to do it. They've got a lot of other stuff to do. So in many ways, it is already kind of something that a faculty member could deploy. I also think of it as very low stakes. Um, some of the quizzes that I give, I just hope that they did their reading. I'm happy to give them their five measly points that don't count for a ton of their grade. But I do think that this model allows them to play through it, to play through it again. When they share their, their scores, it will show you how many times they've taken it. It'll show you their best score and their worst score. So a lot of this stuff, I think it's just, it's just new waters. We're, we're exploring what's the best way. I think the flexible way is the right way for now. And then slowly we will learn whether this should be hidden and protected or whether this is just part of free learning, low stakes learning. And I think we need to have more of that for our students. You know, if everything's high stakes, it's really hard to learn. It's too, just too much pressure and too much content. So um, that is really a glimpse of what PhysioU is bringing. Um, what cardiopalm app, lines and tubes, assistive devices, um, pharmacology, 
there's a lot of apps already. And then the final app for acute care is coming. We're busy getting it ready. So I hope that's useful for you. And, and James and I are happy just to take some questions. Any thoughts, any comments or things that you can imagine you, we, like you'd like for PhysioU to tackle? I'd just like to open it up now for a few, just for, for a few minutes if anybody wants to stay over and chat about what you saw and any questions. Any thoughts? Okay. Michael, I have a, just a comment or thought or whatever now. I think, um, you know, following this, the, the progression of PhysioU over the years here, it's been a, an interesting journey for me. Um, at the beginning, you know, a lot of information, the clinical pattern recognition, ortho, and then you start expanding to neuro, cardio, palm, acute care, things. And, and each one of them, you, you've, you've stayed true to the thing about you teach them how to fish. You just don't give them a fish. And now I'm talking about the students that, you know, your, your way to, you know, uh, preview it and then practice a little bit, play, and then finally simulation and then eval. And then as you continue to do that with all the other newer apps, it's like a big snowball, just getting bigger and bigger. And so it's taking a little more time because then once you find a nice pearl, you got to go back and apply it to all the other apps too. And so uh, I'm not surprised that sometimes it takes a little bit of time for to get that stuff done. But it's it's to me, it's a, a very useful. And then there's enough flexibility in it for the individual instructors to customize it you know, all the way to the question. Start with that basic question pool that you have out there. And then the teacher can always modify it for the real final exam if they take one on exam soft or whatever it is they do that. So, you know, I think yeah, I mean, use both ways. Yeah, philosophically, James, I would say that a lot of these micro learning experiences, all of these like interactive treatment sessions, I have built purely for the student, really. I wanted to create something that this generation wants to play through that they value in terms of the ability to feel like they're the therapist. I've always, as a young student, I always said, man, I wish I could see into the mind of that specialist. What are they thinking when they see that? What are they thinking when they apply that treatment? We can do that. They're gonna to get to follow this therapist going through the eval. We have that for neuro. Um, we have these acute care treatment sessions. I think these kind of things are disruptive in a good way. There are things that we could never get done with paper and pen. And they are also asynchronous, which means it's scalable. It is something that we do not have to squeeze into the diminishing time we have with our students. And so I hope you guys can see as PhysioU is evolving that a lot of the inspiration that comes, I mean, the inspiration comes from a desire to help students learn better and faster and to try to expand the resource pool from just libraries of videos to now interactive experiences. Um, I think all of that together, we can really build a workforce that is, that is well-trained, that is experienced and can really do some good in, in, in the world. And so um, anyways, uh, that's, that's just my spiel about where we're headed. Any other comments and thoughts? And, Thank you for those who have who have you know made comments about how the students and you guys have loved using the apps. Those that's music, music to to our hearts as we continue to build. Any other thoughts or questions? And just remember that remember you as faculty have full access. All faculty get can use this freely in their classroom. The students are usually the ones that pay for the subscription. The, sub the subscription is less than a textbook. Every year, it's less than a textbook. Our students use it for three years and still use it while they're out in the clinic. Um, so uh, know that you have full access. If you ever have comments or questions, you can always reach out to me at mike at physiou.com. And um, uh, I hope that you guys all have a, a little break during the summer, um, a well-deserved break. So I know how tough it was this year. I was in the trenches with you. 
Um, and I hope these apps will, will really make a difference in your classroom. So thank you, everybody. Hope you enjoy a wonderful summer and um, look forward to staying in touch. Thank you. And James and I are here. If anybody has any last comments, feel free. Mike. Um, hi, Michelle. Uh, hi. I, we are full blown classes right now. So this is amazing. And I'll have more time in the fall to look through it a little more closely. Yeah. I missed the neuro meeting this morning. Somehow you got bumped to my promotions section of my email and I missed it. Is that recorded? That's it the is recorded. I'm in right now. James, would you um, make sure I'll send it to you, Michelle? It, it will be posted. Um, these videos, after we process them, meaning we kind of put timestamps and stuff, they will be posted here under faculty resources. If you go back to our website here under faculty resources, and then here under deep dive webinar. Ah. So you'll be able to go and find neuro impedes. And I would just wait for uh, maybe a couple days um, because we'll upload the latest version that we did today in here. But this one is already very good. Um, and you'll get a pretty good sense of all the neuro apps, but there, there's more stuff that I showed today. So I would just wait. And then James, maybe we can make sure we get Michelle's email and we can send her yeah. a link directly. I was just going to ask right now, where do you teach Michelle and, where, and what's your email? If you, I know where you teach, I can always find you. I think Michelle's at University of Alaska, James, with oh. Aline. I mean, oh. we, I was just talking with her about Leanne, so. Oh, UAA, okay, yeah. yeah. James, I'll put, it, I'll put it in the chat. I'm new, so I don't know if I'm in their directory yet, but I'll, I'll put it in the chat to you. And you, uh, you know Leanne very well, I hope. I'm getting to know Leanne very well. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm her, I'm her campaign manager for her run for director, so. Oh, well, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, she was on the, she was on the California board when I was on the board too. And then uh, she left and I became president and then she's now running the, not running the show, but she was up in Alaska. So it's You've known her a long time. Her career is, is amazing to see the breadth and depth what she's done. And, and so, um, and she's actually a Lucy Blair award winner from APTA. So good for her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you guys are yeah I feel her. honored to get to be here and get to know Leanne. Yeah, so. That's so great. I mean, Michelle, to be on your end of the journey is such <laughs> a exciting and labor heavy time, that's for sure. So these apps could come in really handy it to is, reduce your workload a little. It well, is so labor heavy. And I'm finding too, you know, I, I have videos that I can use with permission from my latest uh, clinical experience which is peds and i'm just lacking the neuro videos and lacking the um you know that real life those, those real life scenarios to share with my students i can share lots of information and demonstrate but to see the patients so i'm hoping as i dig around your neuro piece that i can you know find some of that for them yeah a lot that. of a lot of the neuro stuff um michelle you'll find pretty much anything you need to teach for neuro is already in the apps. That that part is really nice. So you will once you dig around, I would go to neuro rehab. Yeah. You will see neuro exam, all the examination stuff, all the interventions, pretty much, and then PNF, um, and then neuroanatomy is coming by the by fall. You will have neuroanatomy as well. So great um, for peds. You have developmental milestones, which is you get to watch the baby develop month by month, the same baby for a full year. Um, and all the reflexes are here. I, I would advise that you take a look at the video. It will give you a good walkthrough. Right. Um, and we are filming right now pediatric interventions. So all the common interventions, as well as interprofessional uh, management, evaluation and treatment of children with different disabilities. Um, we are filming that, I think, in Iowa, actually, right now, with some clinical specialists. So PT, OT, and speech. So you yeah. actually get to see the whole team doing some cool stuff. Yeah, that'd be that'd be great. Yeah. So nice. I'm glad I'm glad to have attended today and get this little bit of a walkthrough to yes. see what's in there. I've dug around a little bit, but this has been really helpful. Great. Well, I, don't, I don't know if it was you, Michelle, but someone in the chat. I'm trying to look back here, in asking if, and Mike, this is a question for you: is that how how similar is one app to the other? I mean, is, is a format 
and I said, well, there, there, there's kind of a mindset of similarity, but then there's some uniqueness because of pathologies. Yeah. Uh, how would you answer They're that all, question? I, mean, I would say that they all come through me and most of them are masterminded by me and, an, and a content expert. And so there is variations in the way the app is organized because not every, like, you know, in ortho, you need prevalence, you need uh, outcome measures, you need physical exam, interventions, exercises, but not all, all apps are like that. But the flow of most apps um, will feel very similar, which is another nice piece of having PhysioU create things for all the parts of the curriculum. Um, but they are different enough you'll see that it's somewhat logical because of course faculty members and I have created these, um, but they're not, they're not perfectly the same because the content is so different even among practice areas. See, I think that, you know, they're similar, like the basic science ones, like the range of motion, manual muscle testing, you know, is very technique and ortho, very technique thing. And right. then the other thing that's very similar is your, um, how the student learns, you know, preview it, you know, you, you still got to, you know, go through the thinking and thought processing processes to um, uh, get it done right. And then, but the techniques can be different, you know, in terms of uh, the different tests and stuff. So I, I think there's similarities yet differences, but there's still, I think, a main um, kind of uh, uh, format that you can see in all the apps that are the same. Yeah. 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 They're all cars. Some have two doors, some have four doors, some have a, right. you know, some have a, you know, an ashtray, some don't now. I guess most of them don't now, but yeah, yeah, not a good example. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Look forward, to, feel free to reach out, Michelle, anytime if you ever have questions um, and happy to connect one on one. If you, if you have a specific class that you're like, hey, Mike, do you have any ideas on how to do this class or that class? I'm happy to jump on with you. I might take you up on that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Right. I can think back 18 years and I know exactly where you are. Oh and my you, God. You're a day ahead for the next two years. You're a day ahead. <laughs> That's okay. Exactly. <laughs> you know, James, you, it's like, oh, there's a yeah. midterm on Monday. Well, Sunday's going to be busy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's it. You got it right yeah. on. Stay All right. There. Thank you. Great. Thanks guys. Take care. Bye-bye.